Midweek Freak Treat, F*** Chance, minutes 60 to 65. I'm Adam, and you're in. And I'm Steve. You're in. That's right. This week we're talking about F*** Chance, minutes 60 to 65. I feel like every one of these specific episodes starts the same way, where we just repeat the same thing like three or four times right up the top. Do you want to say what we're watching and what time we're watching? Uh, well, we're watching uh, Chance, and it is minutes 68 to no. 90. No. What? Oh. All right, okay. let's start it again. Let me do it again. I'll start over. You got to bleep them. Yeah, I'm going to bleep them anyway. It doesn't matter. Well, you shouldn't have to. These freaking libtards, like, get out of your emails and go live life. Right? Stop emailing us. Man, that reminds me. So when the pandemic first hit and, like, all the stuff was going down, um, there was this, like, automotive shop not too far from where I live. And so my wife and I, we, we yeah. were, we'd go for walks around the area where we live. And we'd walk past this automotive shop, and they were totally, an, a, like, anti-mask, like, anti-vaccine, an, like, not, I don't want to say they weren't pro COVID, but I mean, like, they just, they didn't, they thought it was all, you know, fluff and hubbub. But you they can had, say pro COVID. I, I think guess, you're right. I guess yeah. so, yeah. Well, anyway, it's not a political podcast, and COVID is a political issue now. So, but they wrote this, they put this sign in their window that, read like the most beautiful beat poem like I, I every time we walk past it i would read it like a beat poem and it felt awesome to read it like that so i'm gonna recite it back to you and i'll do okay. it in the style of a let's say uh, a def jam poetry slam type of a performance okay all right yeah. <clears throat> goes like this get off line get off off lies and live life and uh Ooh. every time we walked past i just i laughed and laughed and went well well you're you're not wrong about any of that stuff you're right about the sentiment is correct but not for the reasons you think it is <laughs> like i agree <laughs> we all need to get offline and get off lies and live life but you're not right in that automotive shop. It doesn't matter either way. This week we're talking about Fat Chance, minutes 60 to 65. This week we're talking about Fat Chance, minutes 60 to 65. This week we're watching the crescendo of that fat bitch's career as this whole charade comes crumbling down, all just... The consequences of her actions are all laid out for her this week. Yeah, we're on the downward slope. When the ocean crust subducts under the continental crust, it creates uplift, which allows people to climb up that uplift and then go down it. And that's what we're seeing in Allison's character. Did you know that there's a business near where I live called the Green Door, but their building has a red door? Figure that out. I can't. That's frick. I don't like That's it. That's like one of those mind things that you don't really understand until you probably die. Like, right before your death, you're probably going to figure it out. Well, exactly. A high golden mind will visit you <laughs> on your deathbed and explain it to you. And maybe we could get a high gold mine on this show. Well... I don't know. He's Jewish where it counts, and I don't know if uh, if the if the man upstairs, aka David A.R. White, would be cool with us having a, uh, a one of God's chosen people on our show. I, I don't know. I'm down for it. I just don't know if David would allow it. I don't know the big frickin' deal. Like, why aren't Jewish people and Catholics getting together? It's all the same. Everything together. Together. Same, same, right? You love yeah. the same guy. It's like it's like they both love peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, but one of them likes whole wheat bread and one of them likes white bread. See if you can guess which one likes white bread, you know what I'm saying? But like what, what difference is still peanut butter and jelly at the end of the day? So which one does like the white bread? Because I'm confused. That's for me to know and you to find out. I would say Christians are white bread and then Jewish people are brown bread. Yeah, they're unleavened bread. Well, if we want to talk about unleavened bread, <laughs> we're going to have to do a whole podcast about that because there's so many different co countries that do unleavened bread. And for some reason, a couple of uh, countries put some yeast in there and yeah. then they were all hot tits. Is Bannock unleavened bread? I think so, yeah, because it's not, uh, it doesn't rise 
There we go, God's chosen people. It's, uh, it, it is delicious. This week we're talking about f chance, minutes 60 to 65. Are you sure? Uh, the more I say it, the less sure I am of it. Because you think, uh, well, I, I'm going to bring up something that actually happens in this 60 to 65. Please don't. Okay. No. <laughs> so we're listening to chance, minutes 60 to 65, and we get a pop in from Victoria <laughs> Jackson. Do you think that's the last we see of Victoria Jackson? Uh, other than when she will eventually officiate Justin and Allison's wedding... Yes, I think that might be the last Victoria Jackson when she pops in and goes, I just wanted to pop my head in to see if how you were doing. Now he goes, I'm oh, fine. Ruined my life. Well, I, I hope that during the credits they have the wedding scene in the far future, 20 years from now. Oh, no, I was going to say like 20 minutes from now. <laughs> <laughs> I picture him in like old person makeup and <laughs> – like. Like they live, they both lived their whole life separate, yeah. and then came back into each other's lives at age seventy, and were like, maybe we should have gotten married, and we could have saved ourselves all the heartache that we had throughout our life. Yeah, Justin's f Allison super skinny. Oh no, Allison's the fattest she's ever been. <laughs> <laughs> I think that uh, holds true to our comedic stylings. I like to go opposite like to go you know, bigger bigger better. yeah yeah it's uh in my mind justin is like a ho like a home care nurse and ali is 700 pounds and completely bedridden and then they meet they he go comes to deliver her meals one time and he goes wait a minute are you ali cat 69 from f 50 <laughs> years ago she go oh night <laughs> oh my god i can't believe you still remember me yeah. <laughs> goes, you don't look anything like your picture do you think they have all of their limbs? <laughs> I think they have extra limbs. <laughs> well, it is the future after all. Exactly, yeah. Uh, Justin has a set of Goro arms so he can deliver meals faster. He can just walk down the center aisle in the hospital and just chuck the food with two arms. Pretty cool. Well, we've figured out uh, video calling. Next yeah. step is Goro arms, I think. I think it's one-to-one. -one. It's like, what do you want out of life? Well, I'd like to be able to see my loved ones when I call them, and also I want to have Goro arms. Yeah. We're never going to get flying cars. The The dream is dead. No. Personal jetpacks. But Goro arms. Oh, Goro arms. That's easy. Anyone could have those. Or Shiva arms if you're a lady. Whatever. That's fine, too. Or Kintaro arms if you're a cat man. That's fine, too. Or a swip swap. If you want Goro arms and you're a lady, go for it. Sure, if you want Goro arms and Baraka blade, you can have it, buddy. It's the future. Whatever you want. Oh, man, I thought you were going to bring up Barack Obama. <laughs> I almost, oh, If you want God. two of your arms to be your arms and the bottom two arms to be modeled after Barack Obama's arms, sorry, President Barack Obama's arms or President Donald Trump, whichever president you like, you can have them. Well, I want my bottom half of my body to be Barack Obama and my top half of my body to be Gora. Oh, see, I want the bottom half of my body to be Barack Obama, but the top half of my body to be Michelle Obama. <laughs> well, Barack Obama is definitely Barack Obama where it counts. Exactly. And if you get the bottom half of Barack Obama, you're getting a piece of Michelle Obama anyway, you know? <laughs> so it's all good. Yeah, you just got to fold your body and you <laughs> you're mm. there, baby. If you get Goro arms, could you just be like, take out half my ribs too? Like, whatever. I want to have Goro arms. I want to be able to, like, walk on my four hands like I'm a scorpion monster. And I want to be able to S my own D. Just make it happen, science. The technology's definitely related, so I have to say yes. But, <laughs> like, if you take out a couple of ribs, is that a guarantee that you're going to be able to, like, you know? <laughs> be able to do push-ups with four arms i don't know i can't say for sure if that could happen but i don't see why not no s your own d oh it's funny to think that like that's like that's like a thing like a trope that oh yeah, every guy wants to s their own d if they could get your ribs s your own blah, blah. but it's like i don't think i want to i don't think i don't think i would enjoy it you know what i mean did you ever try? Of course I've tried. Of course. Yeah. Of course I've had dreams about it and wake up with sticky pants. Of course that's happened. How far did you get? Because I leaned over like five degrees and was like, nah, that's not happening. Well, let's see. 
Let's see. That's that's a good twenty eight degrees right there. Yeah. Well, I'm Nick Lachey, so I got ninety eight degrees of uh, bending in my body. I. It just doesn't seem. I don't know. It just doesn't seem like it's worth all the effort. Well, I think it's well worn to our territory that it's more like S and a D than getting your D S. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Because like. Yeah, it might feel good in the moment, but you're you're working. Like you're yeah. you're physically working your whole body. You're throwing out your back to get this done. Just yeah. you know, tape a picture of Yaddle to your bed and frick between the mattresses. Whatever you got to do, but if that's what you got to do, then I don't know, loosen up a bit. Loosen up definitely, but also get a flashlight. Right? Yeah, you can get a mouth attachment. Hell, get your own mouth molded into it. Whatever, if that's what you need. Now that's the thing that needs to happen, is to be able to get your own mouth molded into a fleshlight for your own purposes. Yeah, of course. Well, I mean, if I was going to do any of that, I would get my own butthole molded into a fleshlight. Yeah? Yeah, why not? I don't want Mine's my... too tight. I don't... Well, see, that's what I'm after. <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. Okay, okay. How did they get that mold? Like, I think they have to put a lot of glue on you. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of cornstarch. They would have to. I mean, I get how you get the mold of the dinger. That makes sense. But yeah, I, just I, plop her in, yeah. Anything else, I go, that's got to be uh, an awkward and uncomfortable scenario to get that done. Well, it goes from liquid to solid, and then you just peel her off. It's it's a pretty easy procedure nowadays. You're like very confident. Well, yeah, the, with the technology of molding nowadays, it's easy peasy lemon squeezy. You have to spread a lot of butter. There was like Ugh. cement and paper Ugh. involved, uh, but now they just use like a uh, plastic or a uh, rubber or something i had the pleasure this week of explaining to my wife what the slang term truffle butter was and uh that was a real treat a real pleasure <laughs> wish i could do it again i've never heard that term before but i want you to text it to me <sighs> yeah i don't want to explain i, I it don't want yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah this is this there's no explicit rating on this show this is a family friendly show so i don't think we can we can't explain what truffle butter is on this family friendly show you know what we haven't done on this podcast whatsoever is talk about what we got for Christmas. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's a very good point. It is a family-friendly show. This is uh, mm -hmm. the half-hour family hour. And yeah. um, what did you get? Santa nice to you? Santa was nice to me. He brought me a... My my favorite underwear is by the company MeUndies. Not a sponsor. It doesn't matter. I'm just telling you the story. And they make, uh, like, adult onesies. Like, uh, mm -hmm. you know. So my my wife got me one of those that had pizza all over it. And uh, I wore it without removing it except to go to the bathroom. I wore it for, like, six days in a row and got very depressed. I realized if you just wear pajamas all day and you never change your clothes, you get very depressed. And so that was my Christmas. <laughs> What about you? What did you get for Christmas? Well, I'll also just touch on your uh, depression a little bit. Please when do. When pa the pandemic started, I didn't, like, shower a lot or change my clothes, and I got very depressed. <laughs> like, not changing your, your state of your physical being just leads to depression. It's bad enough, like, not leaving your house for days at a time. But if you're yeah. just wearing the same clothes the whole time, oh, my God, brother, that's that's a bad <laughs> time. Yeah, but worth the experience, of course. Of course. And uh, that onesie is the most comfortable thing I own. I, I would wear it all the time if it didn't make me depressed to wear it all the time. It's my favorite piece of clothing that I have. Uh, Yeah, I'm going to – well, my, my – Santa Claus on Hawaiian uh, on a Hawaiian vacation Hawaiian shirt is maybe my favorite, but that one's good too. Well, God bless Adam and God bless uh, Steve. Oh, thank you very much. I got a robe with a hood on it. It's very plush. Mm. It's very uh, purple. Oh, uh, it's very very nice and comfortable. I also got some uh, Toronto Blue Jays of Haiti uh, <laughs> pajamas. The Haiti Blue Jays, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. It, now, are those pajamas tops and bottoms or just bottoms? Just bottoms. Nice. And they're very thin. And <laughs> you see everything. You see, your legs go all the way up in those. I put them on, and we were about to go over to the in-laws, 
and uh, my wife would not let me because <laughs> it was all dinger all day. That's beautiful. That's uh, yeah. what I mean. That's more of a gift for your wife than anything else. This is what I'm saying mm-hmm. is that she got herself a gift, and I can't harm her for it. No, and well, you shouldn't harm her regardless. But yeah. also, <laughs> that was such a weird thing to say. <laughs> oh, best intentions, though. Of course, I yeah, you harm your wife with the best intentions. Everybody knows that. That's what they say about you every show. Unharm my wife with the best intentions. <laughs> I take back all my harm with the best intentions. Yeah, yeah, and oh. I got slippers. I was I got a Terry's chocolate orange. Oh, it didn't this year. Oh, uh, I mean, I bought it myself and put it in my own stocking, but yeah, it's still mine. I still ate it. We ask for no Toblerones each year, what? and all we were able to do is get a smaller one. Dang, doggy, why? Why are you not a Toblerone family? Because they blow. Whoa, it's... they're awesome. What are you talking about? No, they're tough to eat. Like we got this, we used to get these Costco ones that were like super huge i'm talking logs upon logs oh yeah and they were not for me too icky sticky see i like us i'm with you though i don't want a big one i just want to i want the small toblerones where the piece of the triangles are like you know yeah. an inch tall that's perfect i don't want anything more i just want a one bite toblerones i don't want to have to like bite a bit of the big triangle and then eat more no nah. now i'm getting chocolate all over my hands i'm not into that what I am yeah. into, ever had a panettone or a panettone or a panetta? Um, I don't think I have. Is it coconut? It's it sounds like a coconut thing. You're not right, but you're also not entirely. It's a fruit bread. So it's Ooh. like it's like a fancy, very soft, very moist bread that has a ton of dehydrated fruit in it. So raisins, apricots, uh, cranberry, all kinds of stuff in there. It's uh-huh. it's delicious. I can only find it at Christmas time. It seems like it comes in. It's an Italian thing, you know. Uh, pepperoni salami makes it and sends it over here, and uh, it's it's delicious. I found I one. I thought that was a really good bit. Pepperoni salami was great, and <laughs> I think it's true. Yeah, I I choose to believe it's true. Hey, you know what? We live in a post-truth era, and so I believe that all Italians are named Pepperoni Salami at birth, and then they they pick their silly-sounding Italian name after that. Giuseppe! And if we're wrong, email us about it. Stop emailing us about these stupid beeps and FBs and yeah. Y words. And quit telling us how you want to die. We don't. Why are you sending us that stuff? We don't have any listeners in Italy, so get at us, Italy. What do we care? Tell us you want to live. For real? Yeah, Italy. <laughs> yeah, Italy. It's only Italy's problem. Well, as far as I'm concerned, yeah, it is. Yeah, pepperoni salami. Pepperoni salami, yeah. President Pepperoni Salami is here to save the day. Don't worry. That would be... What a what a treat that would be. If there was like, um, like an Independence Day style movie where the whole world had to unite against a common cause and then you see all the presidents of all the leaders of the countries at the UN or whatever like that and the Italian president is named Pepperoni Salami mm. and it's never it's not addressed it's not even like made it's just there you just see his name takes as Pepperoni Salami or her whatever either way most likely him though well then the Secretary of Defense from Italy comes up and also Pepperoni Salami <laughs> of course yeah <laughs> And then the vice president comes up, pepperoni salami, and then the world finally gets to sneak behind the veil of their stupid <laughs> not using their regular names, which yeah. is pepperoni salami. Greta Thurberg, the leader of the UN, stands up and calls upon pepperoni salami, and like seven people turn their heads, and you're like, I don't know, President Pepperoni Salami, I guess. Is that <laughs> what's your first? Is your name? Is your fu- is your first name pepperoni, last name salami? You go, oh no 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, oh, no, no, no. It's pepperoni salami. <laughs> well, this week we're watching Fat Chance, minutes 60 to 65, and uh, you're in for a real treat with this one. I feel like this is the least amount of things that have happened in a five-minute chunk. Yeah, but it's... It's one of the funniest five-minute chunks because it is. We just get to see Ali just getting dumped on. It's hilarious. I this five-minute chunk 
really solidified my opinion that I do not like Alley Cat 69 at all. Like and and the fact that she's going to get with Justin by the end of this movie infuriates me. She doesn't deserve it. She's a bad person. For the listeners, we watched this together because we're very close. <laughs> um, but uh, every single time Allison came on screen, it did a big Ugh, and then <laughs> said something about her. Not true. Par- uh, partially true. Sure. Partially okay. true. I mean, she only came on the screen for, like, 18 times. Yeah, she, in that five-minute chunk, she's all over it. Well, there's a lot of back and forth. You're seeing Justin, you're seeing Victoria Jackson, then back to Allie, then the cousin. And... Mm-hmm. Well, so let's. what happens from 60 to 65? Okay, so f- chance, minute 60 to 65. Mm-hmm. F- chance, minute 60 to 65. So Justin gets a call from Allison. Yep. That's it. Yep, the end. I mean, that does take up a lot of this uh, whole five-minute view, is her trying to get at Justin and tell him how sorry she is. Yeah, for sure. Well, yeah, because she time is passing, and she's getting older. We can see the wrinkles forming, and the gray hairs forming, and her knees disintegrating. And But she... She is, like, calling and texting him constantly, and he is not returning any of those things. He is he is making it very clear that he is not interested in engaging with Alley Cat 69 but she doesn't let up. She doesn't take no for an answer. Well, she doesn't try, like, a breast shot or anything, like, a really good, like, butt shot or something to get his attention. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. Or just sending him a nude of anybody. Just any nude. <laughs> Of her friend. Like, well, sure. If someone's ignoring you, just send them a dink pic. Just, it doesn't have to be yours. Look up, like, I don't care, Pete Wentz's or something like that. And just send it to your friend who's ignoring you. They're sure to respond after that. Oh, they surely will. That's how you get the attention of the human uh, human brain. Is it? We, like, I know it's a nish-nish. I know it's a naughty thing to do to send an unsolicited dink pic to somebody. But if it's not your dink, is that a bad, is that bad? I would have to say no. <laughs> All right, cool. We're in the clear. All right, perfect then. Yeah. <laughs> Don't even worry. Fully Law, cleared on that one. Law, if you're listening, we've cleared it with each other. It's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Interspersed with these calls, uh, unsolicited calls to Justin, mm-hmm. we do see Ellie at the lake uh, in front of a cross. <laughs> and it's not big enough for a Jesus man to be crucified on, hmm. but it's also, you know, too small to be like an ornament. So what is this cross doing there? Well, I think I know if I if I could guess where you're going with this. I, are you going to say that at the end of camp every year, they crucify one of the children in order to ensure that camp is excellent next year? Just one. Just that's all you need. Just one. It's a, it's a sign of faith towards God. They used to do it all the time with animals. Now they got to do it with kids. Same diff. And if he survives twenty four hours, the parents get to take him home. Maybe. Yeah. Well, even if he dies, the parents get to take him home. He gets taken home. Regardless. I don't know if he doesn't survive twenty four hours. Throw him in a cave. You know, see if he resurrects. I mean, if he if he survives twenty four hours, then put a bullet in his head because he's gonna rat this camp out and totally ruin this good thing you got going. Camp Timberlake. It's also a he every year. Of course it is. Yeah, a virgin. So that incentivizes all the kids to get together and date. Exactly. Well, exactly, yeah. And if you date, then you don't have to memorize uh, Bible passages. It's a yeah. pretty good deal. Previous well, episode, yeah. Check exactly, yeah, yeah. And as they all say at the camp, boys are virgins and girls are cherry. That's all. Yeah. Mm. And one of you are going to get crucified by the end of this story. <laughs> 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 the counselors have announcements. They have them all the time. <laughs> One of you is going to be crucified at the end of camp this year. And so you get that to look forward to, I guess. <laughs> oh, that's... <laughs> that's a meatball. That's one big meatball for sure. That got me just right. Um, so... 
Victoria Jackson, so she, Victoria Jackson pops her head in and is like, Bar, what's going on? And Allie's like, he's not returning my calls or texts. She goes, well, well that's on him. Yeah, I guess that sucks. And then <laughs> Allie's like, I'm going to call him one more time. It's like, yeah. why? But this is the phone call she makes to him. Hey, Justin, it's Allison again. Don't worry. This will be the last time I'm calling you. You know, a lot of stuff happened that was really unfair to the both of us. And now I've realized I'm going to be fine. So don't worry about me. I'm fine. Goodbye, Justin. And then she hangs up. And all I could think was nothing unfair happened to you, Allison. And also, you're not going to be fine. And also, why are you making this phone call? What? What is this for? So Justin can go, oh, finally, closure. Oh, thank goodness. You finger-fished Justin. He didn't finger-fish anybody. He's no, innocent. Completely. What? Tell me what was unfair to you, Allison. That's what I need to know. What did you? What do you think was unfair about what happened? Because Going back to camp, probably. So unfair. Oh, so unfair that she made this commitment and then ruined everything and now has to see this commitment through. Oh, so unfair that she can't just skirt her responsibilities, you know? Well, she's young. As long as she does her taxes, she'll be fine. Still. I just want the credits. I want the credits to roll, and I want to jib-jab about it. Well, here's the thing, big boy. We have one more episode of this show that is going to be movie-centric. Movie about is what I almost said. Yeah. But then the next episode is, like, the the final episode is just going to be credits. It's just going to be us talking about the credits, maybe the final minute of the movie, and then credits. So, should be interesting. I think we should start the recording before um, the episode uh, start before our watch. Well, but sure, yeah. yeah. Should we have this conversation off air? No. Okay. <laughs> what else happens oh uh katie the roommate yeah that sounds right caitlin caitlin katie whatever dead dead grandma have her. her she shows up at justin's like uh dorm i guess and he's like what are you doing here <laughs> like he's like he's so disgusted with her but again, she didn't really do anything wrong like she didn't know that she was the face behind a catfishing for most of the movie. And even then, when she found out, what could she do about it? Yeah, and she wanted to go to church. Yeah, much like Hoosier. She wanted someone to take her to church. But uh, that she song couldn't. sucks. And that's the real shame of this movie. It is. It's, it's a crying shame. Oh, yeah, also, Justin goes on another date with that wretched woman from the uh, dentistry office. Yeah, and she's just a piece of and then Justin calls her on her calls her calls her that's yeah, yeah. pretty nice. Yeah. Justin's yeah. great. I love Justin. Me too. I love Justin. We're team Justin here. Uh I will I'll ride or die for that guy. And uh you know what? Throw me up on the cross so that Justin may live. Ah, uh, you're too big. Oh, you're right. Yeah, too tall. I Hang me up, my feet are on the ground. What are you talking about? This cross is doing nothing for him. My, ar my hands extend past the edges of this cross. This is nothing. Dude, totally crushed that cross. Thanks, man. That Thanks, bro. <laughs> man, I wouldn't die, so that's pretty dope. I still die. The fall might kill you. True. What do you hope happens in this la in, in next week's like movie finale? <laughs> I hope we skip right to Justin and Allison getting back together and then credits roll with like <laughs> 10 minutes left or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like... like her roommate shows up to talk to Justin and then he goes, you know what? Allie, will you marry me? <laughs> yeah. And she goes, this must be a trick. This must be a in trick. In 10 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once I bang around a little bit, once I dip my wick in a lot of candles, come on. Not you gotta bang around a little bit. We'll we'll do a yeah. hot, like, three or four months now. Oh, yeah. Break up, mm -hmm. bang around, mm -hmm. 10 years, I'm giving you a ring. Well, she's not going to bang around, but he's going to bang around for sure. She's just going to start oh. collecting cats, probably. She'll she'll definitely bang around. 
I don't think so at all. I think she, after after that three, four months and he dumps her, she is going to hate men. She is going to turn on men entirely. Start, she's going to subscribe to a female dating strategy on Reddit. She is just going to just turn her back on reality and, and the opposite gender. Well, once she takes the pillow out of her shirt, I mean, then she no- looks like a normal human being. Imagine if that's how this movie ends, is with her being like, <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. And she like lifts Hello. her shirt and the pillow falls out, and then she's just normal Sarah Lejeune afterwards. Yeah. That would be, what a trip that would be to end the movie. Like, the pillow is so aggressive in this five-minute uh, scene, and all five-minute scenes. <laughs> it just doesn't look like a human being. No. Of any stars or stripes. God bless this five minutes. God bless all five minutes. You know? We love We love five minutes. But yeah, there's a there's a scene in this five minutes where she's like sitting at a desk and she's like the the pillow is like folded up, like up onto her chest. And it's like that's not how the body works. <laughs> like it's not a cartoon. You're not Daffy Duck pulling your gut up over yourself so you can have a blanket while you sleep. Like that's that wouldn't work. You can see like the corner of the pillow. Like we don't have <laughs> corners. We're flesh and it's fat. Like it's it's just terrible. And it's a my pillow. Those that yeah. company's run by monsters. Like get a small circular pillow and then duct taper or something. Don't just get a bed pillow and shove it under a shirt. Get a get a f- suit. You're a yeah. movie. You've made a movie. You've a, have a budget. Spend a little. How much could a fat suit cost? A fat torso, probably. Probably actually a couple just, grand. But like, get a pregnancy belly then, or something. Like, there's that's easy. Other options than just a body pillow you've wrapped around someone and then duct taped to them. That's no good. You could probably steal a pregnancy belly from a high school easy. They barely have security. Oh, for I thought you meant like from a high school girl. You no, just no, not belly from an off. individual, from the uh, you know, president of the school. Gotcha. Yeah, get a bag of flour and shove it under your shove it in your gut. And... A bag of flour would have worked better. <laughs> <laughs> a trash bag full of water would would have worked better than what we have. Water work better. Water work G- junk. Anyway, great five minutes as always. Uh, yeah, can't wait to see how this wraps up <laughs> probably a lot of credits and a wedding you're absolutely right and a removal of the fat suit yeah oh yeah wasn't there wait a minute wasn't there a movie where a girl did wear a fat suit to like school to to see what it was like to be fat yeah shallow how <laughs> It might have been called F*** Like Me, actually. Oh, that's cool. 